So we are live today and we are going to be having conversations about learning tree. I wanna thank everybody for joining this live stream today. I have this question that gets asked of me on a regular basis, which is how do I learn a Ghanaian language? And a lot of you are watching maybe in the US, you may be in Canada, the UK, um, other parts of the world, and you are interested in coming to Ghana, uh, but you're wondering, can you actually survive by only speaking English? And the answer to that is actually yes, you can survive by speaking only English, but I also think it's very important that when you do move to another country and there is a native language, that you do learn at least some of the basics so you can greet some of the people in the community, have conversation and listen in. I know some people think it's impossible, but it is very possible to learn another language. Um, the other thing is um, I have three people here today who are going to be sharing their experiences. I have um, three different perspectives. One is Dr. Cambon, who moved to Ghana from the US and he has become completely fluent in the tree language. And he also knows other African languages as well. And he has a PhD in linguistics. I think he is a perfect example to show you that if you've never spoken a word in any African language, you can become fluent. You can learn to speak the language. And then I have Diallo Sombri, who is the CEO founder of the Adinkra Group. And the Adinkra Group has uh, tours. They bring people to Ghana. They have been connecting the diaspora with African culture for many, many years. And he recently started to um, organize classes for people to be able to learn and come to Ghana. We also have Emmanuel. Hello, Emmanuel. Hi, Ivy. Um, so uh, we also have Emmanuel, who uh, has the Tree Learning Center, where you get the opportunity to take lessons, whether it's here or it's abroad. You can do it online, you can do it in person. So I have these three gentlemen here joining today for this live stream to have this discussion about learning an African language. So I'm gonna let um, the three of you get a chance to introduce yourselves and tell a little bit about what you do. So I'll start off with you, Dr. Cambon. Dr. Cambon. So uh, I'm greeting you for the evening. I hope that all is well. Um, I'm gonna Okunini, and I prefer Okunini to doctor because that is in our indigenous African language. Um, I started learning Chi back in 1998 when my mother first brought me here to Ghana as part of the Sankofa journey, which she's been doing ever since 98. Um, this year has been the first year we haven't been able to do it, and of course, because of the coronavirus. But from there, I continued my studies in 99. That was just for two weeks. And then I did a year of study abroad here at the University of Ghana. And my goal was to learn it well enough to be able to teach Ghanaians, uh, native speakers of the language, uh, Chi. And I, I put it in terms of if I'm dropped off on a desert island, I want to be able to basically bring into being the entire culture surrounding it uh, single-handedly. Um, and what I find is that generally when people say, Oh, I just want to learn how to say and that's it. You know, that if that's where your goals are, then that's where you may attain. But if your goals are much loftier, then you're able to do that. So uh, as mentioned, I have my PhD in linguistics focusing on uh, the Akan language. Uh, a PhD thesis was serial verb nominalization in Akan, uh, which won the Vice Chancellor's Award for the best PhD thesis in that year in the humanities. Since that time, uh, 2014, from 2014 going, I've taught at the Institute of African Studies and I also teach Chi uh, to Ghanaians uh, at the university level. And some people are like, wow, how could that be? And I'm like, you have an English department, you have Ghanaians teaching English to people who come even on study abroad from the US. Why should it be any different, you know, just in that sense? Um, and some of my focus areas are on how serial verbs are made into nouns and then also neologisms. And these are technical terms, scientific terms in Qi, um, things like electron, things like proton, you know, uh, hydrogen, just all of these different things uh, in Qi, and then also archaisms, which are, you know, 
classical terms, you know, uh, for various things from colors of the rainbow to just all types of things uh, that you find. So I think that's uh, it for an intro, and I appreciate you having me here, Madam Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And so now I'm going to uh, let you introduce yourself, Yalo. <laughs> Okay, can you hear me? I just unmuted myself, wanna make sure you can hear me. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so my name is Diallo Sumbri of the Adinkra Group. Um, sorry about that. I, um, I, I, I've been involved in the Pan-African world, worldview communities um, globally since I was born because I'm an extension of uh, my parents and, and their peers and the work that they've done to help us <clears throat> those of us in the African diaspora kind of find a place for ourselves within the current context of what it means to be an African people. So that's that's where I'm rooted. Naturally, um, uh, I'm, I'm here with you all as the only non-tree <laughs> speaking person right now, um, just to kind of share some of my experience about why why I've got involved uh, in, in tree language and some of what I do in Ghana. Um, Birthright Journeys is an extension of the Adinkra Group, an African cultural resource company based in Washington, D.C., where we've been focused on the cultural arts and uh, African-centered education uh, for the past 20 years. And over the past uh, uh, five to eight years, we decided to extend that uh, by actually helping introduce Africans in a diaspora to the African continent in real life, just to kind of help de-romanticize some of the feelings that we have about what it means to be African or what it's like in Africa. And then naturally, along with that, when you begin to bring hundreds of people across the water, um, some of those people want to get a little bit deeper connected. Some people uh, want to start researching to repatriate or to move. And then other people just want to be able to move freely and add it to their list of locations and destinations that they might want to vacation, do business or things like that. So some of that has led me to want to get involved more in the language. Uh, I mean, for myself and for others, I don't think that everyone will be, it's, it's going to be impossible for everyone to be as fortunate as I've been to be able to kind of move through the country of Ghana and some other surrounding countries without having um, uh, a mastery of the language um, and just kind of having some tidbits and, and small things. But I look forward to uh, mastering it. I remember some years ago, and I don't know if Obadelli remembers this, and I think I was having a conversation with him about tree and just kind of asked him, how were you able to really master tree? And I remember him telling me, uh, he said, you simply haven't made it important enough for you to do it yet. And when you make it important enough for you to learn it, you'll figure it out and then you'll learn the language and you'll become, come speaking. I, uh, uh, I haven't gotten there yet, <laughs> but it hasn't prevented me from um, um, from being able to move around. But um, I'm happy that to be working with the Tree Learning Center and to at least have some some mastery of the culture behind the language. So I'm really excited to to be a student on this call and to uh, kind of continue and extend uh, some of what I'm doing with the Tree Language. So Ivy, hopefully that wasn't too long. Oh, that's fine. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now let's hear from you, Emmanuel. You are from the Tree Learning Center. Let me unmute you. Okay. Okay. So, um, as usual, my name is Emmanuel Amorbi, a native of Ghana, a Ghanaian actually, and um, the founder for the Tree Learning Center. So I think I got idea of establishing the Tree Learning Center right after the year of return. You know, how a lot of people came to Ghana and they fell in love with Ghana and they want to relocate to Ghana. And also most of the Ghanaians in the diaspora, that is the reason why I got the idea to start the Tree Learning Center. So Tree Learning Center actually started right after the year of return in January. And the main reason why I started the Tree Learning Center, it's um, some time ago or a while ago, some tourists from the USA came to Ghana and they travel to most parts of Ghana. And they wanted to buy some things from some local market women. That is, they saw a bush meat, that is a grass cutter that they wanted to buy. So they just wanted to know how the local market women trapped the animal to you know catch it. 
but unfortunately they couldn't you know express themselves well for the americans to know what exactly they are trying to say and how they trapped the particular animal that's a grass cutter so there was there was a language barrier right so to move that language barrier between people relocating to ghana because you know after they began um the year of Britain, ghana have actually tried to be the gateway of africa a lot of people are relocating to ghana to do businesses and even to visit to enjoy our rich culture and to remove the language barrier so that people can actually immerse themselves very well when they get to ghana and actually to also build some relationship with business and other things the tree learning center is here to you know help people so the tree learning center you know it's just a school to help people who would want to learn the tree language to immerse themselves well with the Ghanaian people that is one and two to also remove the language barrier so that people who want to do business can actually do the business very well uh, you know because tree happens to be the widely spoken local language although english it's the official language because of our colonial masters the tree language happens to be the widely spoken local language in ghana and about 87 percent of the ghanaian population can speak and understand the tree language right so it is very necessary and it plays an important role in someone coming to ghana or visiting ghana or even a ghanaian in the diaspora so that you won't forget your mother tongue so that is a little bit of an information that I would want to pass to the general public. Okay, all right. Thank you, gentlemen, for all for your introductions. Uh, for people watching who want to know about me, um, I was born in Ghana, but my parents took me to Canada as a child. And uh, mm -hmm. growing up, my mom always spoke tree to us growing up. So the tree language is something I have um, learned my whole life and I understood. But being a, a black kid growing up in a white society um, and kids are always wanting to fit in. I was always trying to fit in with what was around me. So unfortunately I didn't push myself to speak the language all the time, but I could fully understand it when people were speaking because my mom would always speak it. So um, I can speak tree, but I do have a, a non-native accent when I'm speaking it a lot of the time. Um, so I think for me also, I could always continue to brush up. And the other thing is I never learned to read tree. I never learned okay. to read and write it. I only learned to speak it and to, to understand it. So, um, the writing part is something that I could possibly learn. I saw my grandmother's old Bible and I was just like, this is a whole other world to even try to attempt to read this. So, um, so I'm, I'm happy to learn from the three of, from, from, from Dr. Campone and from Emmanuel. Diallo, even though I'm a little bit ahead of you, I'm still a learner in this in all of this too. <laughs> now, I like what somebody said here, uh, one of the comments. I'll put comments on the screen every so often and address them to you guys. Um, this one says, if we are serious about rebuilding Africa, how can you do that if you can't speak African languages? And I think that's a very important point um, because as Emmanuel was talking about communicating with the market women, um, that's just a small scale. It could be, you know, on a bigger scale, depending on where you are as far as communication goes. Now, I want to talk about the phonetics of an African language. So let's talk about tree. Tree, as you said, is the most commonly spoken in Ghana. Um, the other ones, for people who don't know, there's Ga, there's Ewe, there's Fanti, um, Dagbani, Hausa are some of the common languages in Ghana. However, there's plenty of more than that. Did I miss any? Um, there are actually close to 80 local languages in Ghana. Okay. And um, even apart from that, you know, the tree language happens to be the widely spoken. And aside the tree language happens to be the widely spoken, even within the tree language, we have other dialects of the tree language. So we have the Ethiopian tree, we have the Asante tree, that is what we teach. We have the Kwau tree, we have the Bono tree. We have the Ashanti tree, or what in tree we say Ashanti tree, and we also have the Fanti tree. So you could know that even within the tree language itself, we have other you know branches as well aside I know. the other ones that we have. So you know there are so many local languages in Ghana. Just that yeah. you know the tree language is the widely one that it's mostly. So if I understand the Ashanti tree, if you speak the Fanti, I would be able to understand. And if I understand it, uh, the fancy too, 
if you speak Bono, I will understand. If you speak um, Kwa, I will understand. If you speak Asante, the Kwa Pem, that Chim, I will understand. If only I understand the three language. Let me say something about that, because I disagree with you, partly. Um, okay. maybe, maybe Dr. Kambon can, um, can give his opinion on this as well. But for I find, because me, I know Tree, but when I go somewhere where they're like, Tree is really different than the way someone in Accra would be speaking to. Right? Yet, you know, yet. So those be see, words it, I don't know and tonations that I don't know. Yes, so the Kapim Chi, you know, the yeah. Kapim Chi, the Kapim Chi itself, you know, in Accra, Accra is like a no man's land, apart from the Ga who are the natives of the land. You know, Accra happens to be where a lot of people, you know, moving from different, different places and coming together. So someone might be a new learner of the tea language, so might be missing the words. So, you know, Accra, if you get to Accra particularly, you can't really learn tree within a typical Accra community or a Gang community because of how they use some of the words. A typical example is people do say, Mem Fawon Kasa. It is not tree, but it's just a, like a translation that they are, not, they are doing. Mem Fawon Kasa, it's not the rightful way of using it. So right? please translate that for people watching who don't know what you just said. Okay, so Mem Fawon Kasa is they are trying to say, I won't talk with you. Right, and they would say mem fa won't kasa, but fa means I won't take, you know. So they are trying to say I won't take to talk with you or something. That that is not tree, but because the person is a new learner and the person is trying to you know speak the tree language, people do use it a lot. But the rightful way of speak using that particular word mene won't kasa, mene wo in kasa. That is I won't speak with you. So, but they will say mem fa won't kasa. So they can tell tree itself like. They do say in su, but Asante will say in su. So it is just the O. So Asante will make it easier for you to understand and speak the language. But Equiapem, you know, it's a kind of very strict. So it's yes. strict to you. So, so yes. but if someone say in su, and if you understand she, you will definitely know that the person is trying to say water because in su it's water. And in su is water. Yes, that in su is easily. Like if you want to speak it, it it's easier than in Su, right? So that is it. So the Kapim actually it's um not really something different. There's that some of their words it's difficult to pronounce. If well, you, you know how I would, as an, I would I would compare I, I to like the same on way this, when uh, English. Uh, just in one to be on the same point. Go if ahead. Be heard. So Go ahead. when I first started learning uh Chi, this is in the late 1990s. So I'm in my uh, late teens by that point. And I, I have the same issue that you uh, mentioned, Ivy, in terms of different dialects. So I had learned Asante Chi only to come to Accra and realize that people speak Chinglish, which is an odd mix of Chi and English, and it's not Chi. So my major issue at that point in time was even understanding what the English words were when they're putting in, because the way the English is even spoken, like I've learned it as just pure Chi, but then when they're coming, they're coming with uh, and yuzu, it's like, what is the yuzu? And they're saying, I won't use, you know, whatever the thing is. So for me, I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of picking my tea dictionary, like, what is the yuzu? What word is that? And then eventually you come to realize this is, you know, the nature of the Tringlish that they're speaking. But I've really had more of an issue in terms of understanding Fante for some time. And it caused a bit of anxiety as I was doing my PhD research. Um, but you know, what it was was like she I could understand it fluently, but it would be like taking someone who was born in New York and then sending them down to Mississippi to try to understand the you know, language for that analogy for people who can get that. Um, because there are so many changes, but once you understand what those changes are, what the differences are, instead of set, it's going to be dead. So now once you know even just where the S's are coming, it's going to be a D then your brain will start to be able to process it. So when I was doing my PhD research, it was on Asante Chi and for him to and Fancy. Um, that's not a correct term. That Fancy is not Chi. There are Chi dialects and then there's Fancy. But all of these are indeed dialects of what is the umbrella term, the Akan language. So Achim would be considered Chi, Asante would be considered Chi, 
and Wapen would be considered chi. Fanti is still a dialect of Akan, but it's not considered chi, so there's nothing like uh, Fanti chi. But just to come back to this point, that once I could understand what that was, I went out to Eatrin, which is near Almina, Anomansa, and I was able to understand it. So I would just speak to them in uh, chi, and then they would be responding in Fanti, and I understood everything perfectly, you know, well enough to be able to conduct my research. But, you know, and then I also had to do the research in Ekwapim, uh, Akropon. So that means I also had to be doing it in Ekwapim. So I formally studied Asante Chi and Ekwapim Chi, and that was at the University of Ghana. I speak more Asante, but then since being in school at uh, Ekwapim Mampon, it's caused me to really, you know, come back to my Ekwapim Chi. But I would, I would agree with Emmanuel just in the sense that once you know where the changes are and you understand Okay, anytime I'm expecting this in a Sanji P, then I'll get this in either Equipim or get this in Fancy, then it becomes much you know easier. And then even between like let's say from Asante to Achim or you know whatever, there aren't even so many huge changes. There may be a few lexical items that will be different, but in terms of actually understanding, there won't be that major, you know, uh, hurdle to jump over. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I want to uh, mention to everyone here that um, Dr. Kambon has the Abib uh, Tumi um, Educational Center that teaches um, a lot of stuff that is very important for our community, for the Black community. Um, this is the website here. Um, he has courses available. And uh, I also noticed that you have an app um, this Abitumi yeah. app that's on uh, both Google Play as well as on the uh, the Apple App Store. Can you talk a little bit about that? Is that a learning tool people can use? Very good. So Abitumi uh, has been around. Uh, I've been teaching Chi formally online since uh, 2005, and in, through Abitumi as an independent platform since 2006. So this is it's not a year of return that we've been in it for quite some time. But in addition to Chi. We also teach Yoruba, we teach Wolof, we teach Kiswahili, Medunetra, and we're actually expanding out uh, this year. And we would like to actually get full coverage of every single African language spoken on the African continent. So again, we, when you have lofty goals, you're able to get close to those goals or exceed those goals, but that's exactly what we're looking to do. Um, you know, I've been a Ghanaian since 2016, and, you know, in terms of citizenship, and what I came to understand is that, you know, and this is even from an earlier stage, that we have to have our platforms, not just to learn the language. And this is one thing, like even in the advertisements, it mentioned local language. And I don't like to use that term. I like to use the term indigenous language, because when you say local, that's just pertaining to or characterized by a place or position. It's just saying something restricted to a particular place or space. So it's not really having any type of emotional connotation like this is ours, right? But when we say indigenous, we're saying this is something that comes from the land, comes from the soil, grows from inside of here, is ours, right? And I also I heard uh, someone say this earlier, colonial masters. I never use that term either. Terminology is very important. I always say colonial enemies because that's much more accurate. But just to come back to the G, we realize that there has to be a bridge between the understanding. We, when we say a bibitumi, that is black power. So some people who are into culture, you know, it's something that is divorced from our objectives as black people to get liberated. So it's like, oh, I'm into culture, I'm pouring libation with snaps. But it's like, where's snaps coming from? That's coming from Holland or whatever. So it's like there's a divorce from what we talk about with African liberation and then what we talk in terms of us reclaiming our culture. And what Abibitumi is, is we're using an indigenous language to express this concept of black power, right? So we have a BB2, we have a BB Fahodier, and really a lot of it is about conceptualizing the world in terms of our own worldview, right? And, you know, just this morning, this is what we do every morning, just to give you a sense of it. And this is uh, what we do at home is what we're making available. So it's not like I'm gonna get on the internet and say, oh, all of y'all need to learn African language, but in our household, we're doing something different. Every morning we get started, we wake up with libation, and we alternate one day we'll do libation in chi, the next day we'll do libation in Yoruba, and then we'll go back and forth each day. And then from there, we have all these adinkra stamps, and then we also have ramwa, which is the gold weights. So every morning what the children do is we basically make a game out of it. Who, who knows what this one is? So I'll hold up the stamp, the actual stamp that we got from Entonso. And then, you know, it's like, which one is this? 
And now, like, literally, they're climbing over each other to answer. Oh, this one is an Ibrahim Soja, right? That even if the eye is red, it can't light a fire, right? And then we go into, well, what does that mean? What are they even getting at? We're going to Jinyan, we'll get into all these things. So essentially, it has to start from the household. And it's like, I mean, you said, you know, in your household, uh, your mother would speak to you, but, you know, you're doing your own thing. You're trying to be hip. <laughs> um, for our children, this is what we do. So they have to transcribe every single day that they're transcribing at least one page from their tree book. And then from there, they do their Yoruba. And then from there, they do their Medunetra. So this is what we're doing in the household. This is what we've now extended out to the global African family, where you can actually learn about the Proverbs. Right now, as we speak, we have uh, Bwana Msonobare out of Kenya, who's teaching the Kiswahili class, right, through our Bibizumi. We have the Medunetra class. We have two different sections of Medunetra classes that are going on right now. For those who may not be familiar, that is the very first written language in the history of the entire planet Earth, and it comes from right here. So these are, and I don't want to hog up the time, but I do want people to know, come to Abibi Tumi. You can download the app. You can go to the website. There's also a mobile a website, or you can uh, access it through your browser. And there are groups for learning the language in every aspect of the culture. We have 10,000 members. We have 200,000 posts dealing with uh, Kikongo, Kiswahili, Asante Pi, Yoruba, Wolof, uh, and again, this year we're expanding out, we're going to introduce Hausa, Pular, which is one of the dialects of the Fula uh, language, Mandinka. We actually went through a list and we've compiled a list of uh, over 200 instructors in African languages. And, you know, this is what we're also trying to introduce to the Institute of African Studies, which is where I work. Um, so it's very important. And I, I'm hearing, I just saw this comment, I wish my parents had done this. And this is what we get. We get heritage learners. The main two people who come to us, types of learners who come to us are uh, Africans whose ancestors were enslaved and have been removed from the language for hundreds of years, right? Uh, well over 400 years in terms of that. And then we have those whose parents did not teach them the language. So these are Ghanaians who were born and raised in the UK or in Germany and in these places. And a lot of times they have a grudge. They say, you know, I hate that my parents did not expose me to the language so I could fit in. Or So I know I'm not British, but then I'm not fully Ghanaian. So it's like, what am I? I'm kind of like some type of bat. What's really going on here, right? So, you know, this is, I'll just close on this. I'll encourage people to come to a BB to me to learn the language, to learn the culture, and see how it ties in to our aspirations for African liberation, a BB Fahundie. Great, thank you. I've been putting your website on the screen as you were talking so pe people can uh, jot down that information to get to your website and then also find your app. Um, we already have someone right now who says they're gonna download your app today, fantastic. Um, I want to um, go to Diallo and, uh, oh, now nah, my parents are sellout. Just, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> You know, um, just to just to go on that comment, that's why, even though I don't uh, speak it very well and I do understand it and I make the efforts, I am so thankful and grateful every single day when I'm in environments and I'm understanding what's going on. I'm like, mom, thank you, thank you. And I tell her every day, I'm like, when we talk, I'm so grateful that she continued to speak to us. She would be like, um, uh, I remember an incident in a grocery store um, before I got to Diallo in a grocery store. We were there. My mom was speaking tree to us in, in Canada. And me, I was like, mom, speak English. All my friends, they speak English. My mom's like, hey, me, me if ya, me cut me chrome casa. And it was just like, oh my goodness. She'd be like, Italians, omu kamu chrome casa. Greeks, omu kamu chrome casa. Chinese, omu kamu chrome casa. Me if ya, me cut me chrome casa. <laughs> so, being, mom, I, I thank her all the time, seriously, because she did well. She really did well, you know. I'm disappointed my father didn't speak Ewe to us because he spoke Ewe and he spoke Gam, but he didn't teach it to us, unfortunately. So, those are two languages that I would love to learn, and I'm not there just yet. Um, Diallo, um, as an African American who's been bringing uh, groups here uh, to Ghana, what made you decide? 
that it was time to now start organizing and partnering with the Tree Learning Center to have uh, your travelers come and uh, learn the language even before they come, because I think you have online classes as well. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, honestly, um, one of the re the main reason why I started to do this is because in 2019, when COVID-19 hit, I started working with a group of young Ghanaian men and women and created somewhat of a training academy, just investing time in them, having conversations, you know, teaching them about Pan-African history, some of what I know about Ghanaian history and culture, teaching them about some of the great African leaders of the world. And then we were really just kind of talking about business and helping them expand the vision that they see for themselves, right? So I've had workshops with them, work with them, talk to them about, you know, maintaining multiple streams of income, about charting out, um, charting out the, the place for their lives. One of the exercises that I do is I have them write their obituary. And then after they write their obituary, I have them backtrack it to say, okay, now how do you get to this point where when you physically perish, people will say these things about you? So when COVID-19 hit, and these are the same people that work with me in terms of tour guides, um, when people come to visit, when COVID-19 hit, I was actually looking for a way to keep them employed. I was looking for a way to help them continue to earn money to provide for their families um, and, you know, and to continue to stay afloat uh, without too much suffering. So I thought, well, why not have you all become tree tutors? There are people who are traveling, who want to travel um, and people who want to learn the language. So I had been participating in the Tree Learning Center, had a course on WhatsApp. So I had been following it, not, not really studying, but just kind of following it and paying attention. And then I reached out to Emmanuel. So Emmanuel helped me understand the difference between Ashanti tree and Aquapim tree, because I live in Aquapim, but I'm learning Ashanti tree. So when I take some of my homework and talk to my people there, they like, that's different. <laughs> so that's always really, 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 really um, interesting. And, you know, when you're moving and when you're moving about and living in Ghana, it's something for people to understand. When people see that you have invested in yourself in learning the language, they will give you more. They want you to speak the language. They want you, they see that you are serious about the culture and being in Ghana and not just a quote unquote tourist who wants to come take pictures and get the cheapest price. Um, so culturally, it helps them invest in you. So like, like I wanted to make sure that uh, before I left Ghana to come back to the US, I could say Miko Abroshie. So then they, hey! they me, <laughs> so then they helped me understand. So then understanding the cultural element of our brochure is not Europe. It has to be the US because it's foreign and it meant something. Now that's a whole nother conversation that I'm sure um, yeah. Obadoni would enjoy when you start talking about the depth of colonialism and the levels of why going to America was such a greater thing than anything else, not only because of the distance. But what brought me into it was a number of things. One, finding a way to employ people, finding a way to help young Ghanaians be employed. So when I partnered with Emmanuel, Emmanuel helped me understand the difference uh, between Aquapim tree, Asante tree. We both started talking about the quality of our companies and our products and making sure we wanted our brands to be represented well. So we agreed that I would bring in the people that work with me, he would train them, and then he would get to decide as the expert which of those people were adequate enough to teach and tutor the lessons that he provided. So right now I'm able to help, um, I think I have about six or seven tutors who are working with us and I'm able to help them provide for their families by offering it. I'm able, so I'm able to do two things. One, help interested people who um, are interested in learning the language, have a course where they get a tutor to help them throughout the week with the lessons. Um, I'm able to help the Tree Learning Center expand their brand, their work, their effort in terms of learning tree. And it helps to add to the products and the services and even kind of the kind of branding and how we brand languages and offerings and how we help people expand the vision for the way that they see Africa in the United States. Um, I'm also working on a few products and opportunities to scale this up because there's no reason, like Obadeli said, for all African languages, why it should not be available to everybody that wants to learn. There's no reason why all of these people who continue to profit 
uh, uh, whether black owned or it doesn't matter who you are, but when you look at the African tourism industry, language should become a big part of that business model. Um, specifically for me, for people of African descent, I always let people know, people ask me, well, you know, can you travel to Ghana with you if you're white? And I'm like, well, we're not doing this to take more white people to Africa, to be frank. We are interested in helping people of the African diaspora discover uh, and participate in what this new African Renaissance looks like so that the next generation can continue it the same way my generation continue for my parents' generation. So um, it's a way for us to, you know, keep people employed. It's a way for us to expand our services and helping people deepen their understanding of culture and language and a step beyond tourism is also something very good for people who are interested in repatriating or people who are interested in doing business in Ghana. And just let me say, um, let me add that when I say people are not as fortunate as I, I came to Ghana. I didn't come to Ghana for business. So I didn't come to Ghana for tourism. I came to Ghana really for spiritual reasons and spiritual purposes and healing. So my first few times in Ghana, I, I just the only time I saw our crowd was from the airport through the Abri Mountains up through to Aquapim. And I spent all my time in the Ame Betcha there, a small town right past Pimpon in Aquapim North. Uh, so having people that I trust and people that I know with me to help me understand the things that I don't understand is really, 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 really important, you know, and having people who are not just necessarily interested in maybe, you know, a tip I may give them or a payment I may give them, but people who are literally interested in helping me kind of immerse myself and understand the language like like most people, like if you can say I dang in the market, like the value of being able to say that at the right time with the right inflection, even if you don't know any other language, any other word in tree will drop that price by 30 percent from the beginning. <laughs> Just so, because, tell everybody, so tell everybody right now what I dang means. It means why? So it just is 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 my favorite word because it works in so many different situations in a cultural understanding that now somebody has to re-explain themselves and come correct or come again. So it's more than just why. But just you know, uh uh this the last thing I'll also say, um, and I'm sure I would love to hear Obadeli talk about this from a cultural perspective, the importance of greeting to African people, I'm gonna say holistically, is more than just saying hello. So when the morning, when, when I learned and I could say mache, when I'm walking down the path and I could say mache and the people in the town are like, oh, Nana, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> eh, yeah. Or if I could say, well, to say, me hoye, nyame adon, na onswe. When I can just do that, oh my God, it signals that I have a high level of respect for the culture. And every morning I do that, I got to spend an extra five to 10 minutes getting a tree language uh, uh, lesson from somebody in the village, whether it's a baby, whether it's an elder. Once I go that far, they stop me and they start speaking tree and they're not going to let me walk away until they teach me something else. Like, no, no, no. Now you have to say this. And then they'll make me repeat it. They'll make me repeat it. And then I'll be like, OK, I got to go. <laughs> you know, but it's very, very, it's very, very real. But for people, um, and hopefully before we get off, we can talk a little bit more about just kind of what my perspective is, what I want like people to get who've come for the year of return or people who may be entering into their African consciousness. You know, if the year of return helped to spark your entrance into the African consciousness, then some of this would be important for you. But but yeah, I'm employing people. So I'm able to send people a paycheck every two weeks by tutoring. It's, it's the language. It's something that they've had. Um, Emmanuel tells me we have some really good tutors, so I'm sure he could chime in as well. Thank you, Diallo. I'm just putting the flyer on the screen here of um, from your from the Tree Learning Center before uh, I get uh, Emmanuel to make a few remarks. This particular flyer says um, beginners, tree for travelers, tree conversational words. Now, when I see that, it makes me think about um, when people are traveling to other places like in Europe, because a lot of times people will say, you know, I'm going how to say this, I'm going to, you know, Spain, I want to learn how to say, you know, these basic things. But now I'm glad that people are finally saying they want to learn basics in African countries. So if you can, is there Emmanuel, I don't know what's going on. 
Uh, can you please repeat what you said? I, I couldn't hear you well. I said, I'm, I'm asking you, um, when I saw your flyer, it reminds me of when I see travel flyers for places when people go to Europe and other places. So I think it's great you're doing this, first of all. Second of all, what does a class look like what can people expect from a beginner's tree for travelers, tree conversational words course? Somebody who doesn't know a single word in tree, how would you get them started in this? Okay, so um, um, first of all, I'll start with the beginners aspect. So um, for, for the beginners, the course, it's being designed to help people who would want to start learning the tree language from the scratch, starting from the alphabet, um, then the consonants combination, the vowels combination, you work on the pronunciation. So this particular course is for people who don't really understand anything in the tree language and would want to start learning from the scratch and build their pronunciation. Because pronunciation is one of the things that it's very, very important when learning a language. Because, you know, when you pronounce a word differently or wrongly, it might be something different. So as um, Mr. Diallo said that when he says Aden, he really liked that word because he knows what it means and he knows how to pronounce it correctly. So beginners, it's for people who would want to learn the language from the scratch, right? Just from the scratch, then we take our time with our flexible lesson plan to teach them how to speak the language from the scratch to where at least they could express themselves well in the tree language. So the tree learning center is actually trying to help people to read, speak, and understand the tree language. And also for the tree for the travelers, it's actually for people who would want to speak the tree language, but not starting from the scratch. Um, so, you know, most of the time people visit Ghana because they know we have a very rich culture. We have beautiful tourist sites in Ghana and they would want to visit to enjoy some of our rich culture. But mm -hmm. perhaps they would also want to know some few basic words in tree right and would want to you know immerse themselves very well in our rich culture and at least try to know how to um express themselves at least know how to tell someone how they are doing or tell someone their name or even ask someone's name so at least they would want to know how to say within the saying or your friend was saying which translates as what is your name so you know the key for travelers is just a five lesson plan course for uh, people who want to visit ghana they are not trying to relocate to ghana but they're just trying to visit but we want to know how to you know buy some few things from um the market as well so at the end of this particular lesson you know how to you know introduce yourself in tree you know how to you know ask for direction in tree you would know how to ask and tell someone how you're doing you would also know how to buy and sell in tree as well so that when you get to the market you would know how to at least ask of a particular you know a product the price and the cost and how you could pay at all i can't remember when um i visited the city restaurant with one of my students i know she's watching and as soon as we got there her favorite food is wachi so as soon as we got there she said meto wachi like people were like amazed like were happy that she was able to you know at least speak the tree language because if you look at her clearly you know that this particular person is not like Ghanaian. but when we got there and she said meto wachi they were happy and they gave her that special treat so that she knew that she would feel so comfortable and feel so comfortable. So the tree for travelers is for people who just would like to learn some few few things in tree. And for the basic conversational words, it's for people who wouldn't want to, you know, start from the scratch. Maybe a typical example, it's like you yourself, mm -hmm. Ivy, because maybe you understand some of the tree language already, you wouldn't want to the alphabets, the consonants, and those things won't be necessary for you when learning your language. So people who are feeling a little bit rusty because they didn't practice the language, maybe they might have understood earlier, but because they didn't practice, they have forgotten some of the words and how to even join some of the words to form a complete sentence. So the basic conversational words are words that are commonly used in Ghana. That is what um, we teach. So at the end of the lesson, the words that you were finding difficult to you know join to form a complete sentence or some words that you would want to know to you know. But this one is not like the travelers because the travelers is just five lessons for people for some small things that they would want to do. But the commonly used words or the conversational words in tree, it's then lesson plan for people who would want to learn the language but won't start from the scratch like the beginners. 
So they will start from, let's say, um, introducing themselves in tree and actually how to buy some things in tree, telling people their name, telling how they are doing in tree, some directional words in tree, and also try to tell people where they are from. So you get the opportunity to know how to say me free USA or me free America, right? So me free means I am from America. So these are some of the things that when you join the tree learning center and sign up for the particular course that you want to sign up, whether the beginners, the travelers, or the commonly used words or the conversational words in G, you would expect to you know, know at the end of the lesson. And one thing it's, you know, because of how technology has been part of arts and it's growing very fast, we have a live, a virtual live lessons on Zoom as well. So aside the video that you watch, the video just gives you an overview of the lesson that you have on Zoom. So on Zoom, you have a one-on-one -on -one lesson with your tutor so that, you know, if you have any question and if you're having any challenges to with pronunciation, your tutor will teach you to understand the correct way of pronouncing the words and how it means. And if you have any question, perhaps uh, one man, he usually writes names, some words in tea when he sees it at the back of a car. So when a car passes and he sees, you know, it's very common in Ghana. Oh, he writes, yeah. like, you know, Anyamiya Dome and those stuff. So when he sees it, he writes it down. And during a live lesson on Zoom, we come and ask the tutor that, what does this thing mean? So that is one way we are also trying to, you know, help people to really understand the free language. And um, at the end of the lesson, you would be at least try to express yourself with the free language as uh, Mr. Diallo have started. He was once my student, and you know now I don't think he he really need um uh, the change. I, I still am a student. Okay, no problem. <laughs> so um, that, that's it. He knows how the Philani Center have been doing our things and how dedicated our teachers are, and how we try our best various ways because some people are slow learners, some people are quick learners. So we try to balance all these things together and find various ways to teach people for people to understand the key language very well. Because the, at the end of the lesson, we want people to at least speak, read, and understand the key language. So um, that's a little bit about the flyer I just posted there. You know what, I wanna make a comment about um, uh, uh, in the comments here, we have someone who uh, is from, it says learn Bantu languages, uh, Niger, Congo, who says greetings. I do even teach African languages, but I master Bantu languages like Niger, Congo. It is difficult for me to grasp Niger, Congo, uh, how I'll do some lessons tonight. Now, what I love is this comment also went on to say, I'm living in Nguni. I hope I said that correctly. Living in South Africa. Hello, we say Saubon. I hope I said that correct. And then we have someone who's in the comments who responded back. Saubona. So people are communicating with each other. So you're showing that everybody's in a community. People want to learn from each other. Saubona. I hope I said that correct. I'll have to look it up on the right pronunciation, but I think that's great. Um, Emmanuel, somebody asked here. Um, Matowache, I spell it all wrong. I know. So he wants to know what's the proper way to set to, to write Mitowache. <laughs> okay, so um the can if I write it here, can people see? Um write it in the comments and I'll post it. Okay, so it is um in the in our chat and I'll post it. So it is Mito um Wawache. So it is, I would want to, it's, okay. So it is me, me to watch it. Okay, so I use the, um, the black bucket for the, the G O for the O. So it is me to, okay, exactly. Is. So okay, that's he, Kambon, I'll, got it. Okay, okay. I'll post so this. You, could, you could see that the, it's me to, right? Yes. But I'm about to how, put it out. You see, Mereto, he, he wrote Mereto. So Mereto is a crapping P, right? So they're all there. Mereto is a crapping P. So if you want to say so it, this in, if you want to say it in Asante, so it will be. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's pause. Both Ekwapim and Asante P are written the same way. The difference is in the pronunciation. Exactly. So if you pick up a book of Asante P, then it will be spelled. That same way, 
However, the way you wrote it is the way it would sound phonetically for an Asante P speaker. So you would say like me, top watch. Exactly. And the watch is even coming from house up, right? So it's backing, but because you can sound in that uh, phonetic context to make it watch. But this is the thing. So this, and I really love what our brother Paolo said in terms of um, you know, actually providing jobs. So we've done this as well through a BB to me. So I'll have linguistic students who are, you know, very well trained, especially in terms of the orthography, because there's a difference between someone who, you know, knows the language and you know how it sounds and things, versus someone who's actually trained in terms of African language pedagogy, African language orthography, and is actually a professional. So it would it would be like if you have a bridge constructed by someone who, you know, isn't necessarily an engineer. And that bridge may come crashing down at some point in time. Who is an engineer who's trained and studied that is the same way you know we can look at it in terms of the African languages. Now, in terms of the orthography, if we look at how Santi P is spelled and FRPM P is spelled, in this regard, this is the present progressive right aspect, progressive aspect, that both uh Asante P and FRPM P are spelled the same way, but the difference is. How you in the pronunciation it. now in the Asante Chi, and this is correct, you, you would say me talk to. In uh, Equipium, you say exactly. Talk, right? you actually pronounce R, but the spelling is the same, that's very important. But I wanted to just share one quick anecdote on yeah. this Go in ahead. terms of the importance of learning uh, an African language Chi specifically. I had a uh, land dispute, and this is very common in Equipium. For those who know Equipium, <laughs> land disputes. Um, and with this, there was uh, an indigenous Ghanaian and, uh, who was in a software in the Christian tradition. And then there was me, right? A repatriate who's been studying Chi for some uh, two decades. And uh, the situation was I had started uh, building on the land and I was called by the traditional rulers at the Bamuhine um, to say that in that specific location, you're not allowed to be there on Fridays or Mondays. The only way you can do that is if you do a ritual and Nana Brekumadal, the Obosom of the area, would grant you permission to be there on those days. So I say, okay, you know, no problem. So I go to the shrine and we do the ritual. And, you know, there's a proverb in Chi. They say, if you advertise, literally, but the idea is if you advertise your sickness, then you get the medicine for it. So I told the Bamuhene, as we're doing this ritual about me even being able to be on the land on Fridays and Mondays, that look, there's this land dispute that's come up and so forth and so on. And all of this is of course going on in Chi. And when they heard the situation, they found out, okay, the Osofo had bought the land. He bought the land illegally and I bought it legally. But the major thing was that we were sitting there discussing this whole dispute in Chi. And from that, they said, you know what, the best way to deal with it is for you to be installed as a traditional ruler, the Chidom Hene, the Bamu Hene, Chidom Hene. And then this is all family land, so you'll actually be part of the family. And, you know, what it taught me is that sometimes coming from the diaspora, we'll, we'll be like, oh, the Ghanaians are against me or whatever. But here we had a clash of cultures. Here you have an indigenous Ghanaian, a, a, a preacher, a, a sophomore pastor, whatever, who will rather spit on the indigenous spirituality and say, oh, well, they're heathens and so forth and so on, versus me who respects them and speaks the language that the Ghanaians actually took my side on it, one, because I was in the right in the first place, but actually took my side on it. And it really helped to drive home the point of how important the language is. That entire interaction could not have happened in English. I would never have been able to articulate it and have you know that type of situation. And then I would come away just thinking, oh, look, the Ghanaians are ganging up on me and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, it just really goes to the point of how important uh, the language is and then also the culture. So being in that situation was also respect of the culture. They said that they approached someone else about doing that ritual. And a Ghanaian who was like, oh, you know, later for that, that person had to stop um, construction because his workers, they had some type of accident. So then they're like, oh, the place is cursed. We, we got to get out of it. He's like, you should have just did the ritual. What's wrong with you? And this is really what the courses throughout BB to me that I have um, a, a heritage learner, his parents, both of his parents are from Kofuridvi. So he is, you know, an Asante Chi. Uh, he's not a native speaker. His parents didn't teach him the language. And he said the thing that really uh, set a Bibitsumi courses apart is that the language, that the culture is part of the language. So in my first Chi book, which was by uh, Prof. Flores Abinadolfine, 
you know, it had things like um, Coca Cola and um, the Pesce Mercoto, you know, pizza, like all these types of things. And I'm like, I'm not trying to leave English to get more Tringlish, right? What's going on here? So with the courses that we designed it, we designed it with it's like Wubo Abusiambe. Wubo Abusiambe, which is something that's very traditional. We, that's uh, what Matra clan do you belong to? So in that case, you will see something like Asuna, Aguna, like all these things. And that's not in the uh, lessons there because a lot of the instructors themselves are coming from a very you know, missionary education background that they don't even, many of them, I'm not saying all, but many of them don't even have respect for that. So when they're constructing their tree books, it's a tree book of oh me cross or it's not that way. And it's like, oh, I'm going to church on this day, oh me so it's like, and that's in the lesson. It's like, how in the world is that, <laughs> you know, going to get you involved in the culture or we'll have some like who got us bang. And he said that that was the thing that he has all of the key courses from every organization you can imagine. And he said that the Abibi Tumi ones are the best because it really helped him to understand the language, the culture, and the worldview as opposed to, you know, looking down on the worldview. And now you're just getting some type of English thing going on. So I just also wanted to share that anecdote as well. Thank you so much. I, I like your term Tringlish. <laughs> okay, so a quick one on what um, he just said concerning the, the word, the Asante and the Equiapem. So the Equiapem will say Mereto, right? And Asante will say Mereto. So the um, the progressive marker that indicates that an action is ongoing is the re there. But in tree, in Asante tree, when speaking it, you don't, you know, speak the re. What you do is you slide over the er there with the immediate vowel closer to it. So you could see that the merito, you just have to take the er in the merit, right? The er sound there out and say merito. That is how you would say it in Asante. But if you will say merito, so he, he sounds correctly, yeah. Um, so hey, we have I, a oh. here. I was going to oh, add something. Um, oh. But I think uh, um, it's important for people to understand. Um, and again, this is from a Pan-African perspective. I, you know, we've worked together throughout the year yeah. return and also other chat groups. You know, people have to realize that African people, even though, you know, our identity was stolen, we never lost our rhythm and our spirit, right? So when you look at the differences in the languages, it's important for people, and it depends upon how deep you want to get into this, right? So if you are looking to learn some words for your trip and you it's a bucket list thing, you want to take seven, you want to take a seven a day, uh, seven to ten day trip to Africa, scratch it off your bucket list as a black person, and to say I did that, I think we have to make space for that and for that to be okay because we need as many people in the world to touch the African soil as possible. So for those people who are looking to do that. You know, learn to say good morning, learn to say where you're going, how you use the bathroom, how do I get to Cape Coast or whatever. And that's fine. But for other people who and I think it's really important for people who are interested in integrating into society or repatriating, because, as we know, language is an aspect of culture. And so much of our Africanness is embedded in the culture, not only even just uh, the intonations of the language, but the body language that you use when you say the words I'm noticing changes yeah. the meaning <laughs> like 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 it's, it's it's really 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 incredible and these are the things yeah. that i'm watching as i'm learning but um at once in, once once upon a time in my life when i had less gray hair as a college student at the university of the district of columbia i was an english major one of the challenges that i had as an english major as a black person is i couldn't find the culture in the english language and all the culture that i found in the literature in the language was evil. So I had a lot of <laughs> I had a lot of problems with my English professors. But when I began to study a little bit about the differences in the pigeons and the differences in the linguistics where the black people went to, then you found the rhythm of the people in the area in the language. So when you looked at the migration from the south to the to the Midwest or the north of Chicago and Detroit and how our inflections and language changed with black people there versus the in the DC area, New York, Philly, New York, uh, 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 the New England, as well as in the Midwest and in the West, you will find the same thing when you go 
to the African continent because we have to be able to look at language and culture outside of the modern day borders of Africa. So, mm -hmm. so that's the reason why you're going to find Fanti across borders. And that's the reason why you're going to find some of these mis ethnicities and outside of just Ghana. Right. So, because, because, <laughs> because then you'll be blown away when you go to Togo or Benin or Ivory coast and find a village where people speak in tree or a different mm -hmm. kind of tree because those borders didn't exist. So yeah. it's important for me just to share that people don't need to look at African languages as something in the structure of it as something that's so new, right? If you're from New York and you move to Florida, you got to learn the different Ebonics. You have to learn the different English depending on where and how you move. If you're in corporate America, but you still live and work in the hood, you code switch. You learn a different language, yeah. you learn a different inflection, you learn a different body language. So especially in DC, you know, in, in DC, it can make a big difference between what's up and what's up. What's up could mean how you doing, brother? What's up could also mean what the fuck is you looking at? Like, <laughs> and it depends on, excuse my language, but it depends on where you are. So language, body language and all of that is important. But when we look at African language, sometimes we remove those experiences that we have with our own language because we forget that it's embedded in the culture of who we are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so for those people like me who don't speak it well, but we may be able to communicate very well because we understand the culture of it. I want us to not forget about that part because it can help us be less intimidated in communicating, if that makes sense. Great, great. Thank you for making that um, relation there. Somebody's uh, connecting with it. And I think it's important to, when we teach that, we teach it in a way that people understand. Um, Emmanuel, I know that you said that you can't stay on past an hour. And I just want to go for a few more minutes because there's a couple of comments here. So if you need to leave, I'll let you say some things before you have to go. So well, um, I, I'm available. I'm available for, um, for let's say 30 minutes, minutes more, too. Few more minutes to okay. um, they can they we'll can to be on Yeah, we'll just be a few more minutes because there was a comment back few, here that few, I few, had. Few more minutes, yeah. A few more minutes, yes. So there's a comment that I had seen that I had put on the screen earlier before. Um, oh, this one. I wanted to um, get uh, a, a comment on this from from the the teachers here. Um, Dr. Cambon and uh, from uh, Emmanuel as well, that between Tree and Swahili, which language should we keep as the language of a continent? I've heard Swahili, Swahili is the most spoken in Africa, not Tree. Well, today we're talking about Tree largely because we are talking about Ghana, but if you two can comment on this, that would be great. Okay, so I think um, Dr. Um, Okunini yeah. should, you know. All right. Yeah, I actually want to share my screen because I've done uh, a paper in connection with another one of my colleagues uh, called Kiswahili or uh, Kiswahili, right? So it's basically a connection between Chi and Kiswahili. And what we showed is that you find the exact same proverbs in Chi that you find in Kiswahili. I'm not sure if everyone can see my screen. Can you see my screen? I just added it. And can you also hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. So what you find is like in Chi, you'll have a proverb like, which is when a funeral arrives, we are polite to the palm one tapper. Literally, we say, excuse me, to the palm one tapper. Or, which is if a funeral comes, we call the uh, palm one man chief, right? But then you have this similar type of proverb in Kiswahili, which is, which is while drunkenness persists, one should not insult palm wine tappers. And you find the same type of thing where you have in Saba which is one hand doesn't lift a load, or in Saba Kunkukra, which is one hand isn't sufficient for covering the creator's eye. And in, also in Kiswahili, you have this idea of which is a single hand cannot slaughter a cow. And basically what we do is we go through all of these things, which is the healer doesn't heal himself or a healer doesn't cure himself. So in the uh, paper, and you can find this on my other site, um, and it's been published through Ghana Journal of Linguistics, which I'm editor in chief of. We just go through all of these proverbs and what it shows you is that the languages are not so far apart. And what each one of these 
uh, things does, it shows that there's conceptual similarity, contextual similarity, lexical similarity, syntactic similarity, cultural similarity. And we find this, you know, we find this, you know, for so many of these proverbs. And I also did another presentation uh, where it goes into uh, body part expressions. You'll find in these different languages, any type of emotion or abstract concept that you find in English, like happiness, it's like, what is that, right? And that's what I uh, felt as a child, similar to what Jalo experienced, where I felt like English is a meaningless language. Where if you say happy, as a native speaker, it doesn't mean anything. It's not like I means something and P means something to you. You just kind of like learn what it means in context when someone smiles or laughs and they hear the word, okay? But in P, in Yoruba, in Wolof, in Kiswahili, in Medunecha, you find that when you say this, you're actually talking about the part of the body that experiences it. So akomatoyam or abutoyam, which is heart, fall, stomach, or chest, fall, stomach. And that's the way to say happiness. It's like, you know, you're, it's settled down. Everything has come down. And then you find the same type of thing in Yoruba Okanyo. You find the same thing in Kiswahili Moyo Wafuraha, heart of happiness. So in, you know, this is something that I'm working on now. Same thing in Medu Necha, right? Heart is experience of courage, right? And then you find the same thing in, in Chi. You find the same thing in Yoruba. You find the same thing in Kiswahili. And the more you're here, she has heart. And then you find the same thing in the diaspora. So if you're in D.C. or if you're in, you're in New York, you're like, you know, you got a mad heart, yo, right? You're saying this person is very courageous. And the way we say it isn't through an abstract term of courage. It's like, what does that even mean? You're actually talking about the body part that experiences whatever that emotion is. And this is really getting to the core of our worldview. And that's what really... Uh, made tree important to me because for me, I was interested in the worldview and the philosophy. And I said, there's no way to actually understand the African worldview without actually understanding the language. And, you know, when I came to the tree language specifically, I found exactly that any emotion, any feeling that you have is connected to the specific body part that experiences it. So if I say, I'm saying that my eye has received it literally. And you can picture how a child's pupil lights up, how their eyes light up, yeah. and the pupil dilates because they're so. And I was like, this is so deep. This is so powerful. Yeah. But then I realized it's uh, peculiar to cheat. Uh, but again, just to come back to the importance of culture, the importance of worldview. So I don't think it's a thing about, oh, learn Ki Swahili and don't learn Chi, learn Chi and don't learn Ki Swahili, that once you start to learn one, it will open you up to the worldview, and it doesn't have to be either or. In my case, I studied Kiswahili formally when I was an undergrad. I studied Chi, obviously, formally. And what it shows is that we're all one people. We're all connected. The same idioms, right, that you can find in these languages are the same things you can find in the diaspora, right? Wow. This is all so, like, fascinating. When you when you broke it down, the many gen, I never really thought about it as, because I know it literally it's, you know, your eyes are, are are taking it or getting it. I didn't think about it as receiving, and it's literally because your body language, your eyes lighting up when you're happy. You have for it. You say, yeah. I'm saying my, my, my abdomen, like the inside of my stomach burning. burns me. That's what you feel when you're anxiety, you know, anxious, you're you have afraid. anxiety. Anxiety, yeah. It's like the word anxiety is meaningless. It's empty, right? I'm, I'm supposed to be a native speaker, but when I hear the word, it's nothing. But when I say, I can feel that, right? <laughs> so this is one thing. Well, this is how we learn body parts as well. So in the same lesson where we're learning, you know, yem, ani, atiko, you know, it's really like all these things were actually also learning the expressions that are connected to the body parts. And, you know, the people come away from the class and like, this is the most profound thing because we're all taught that our languages are primitive. Oh, we don't yeah. have the word for that. I remember when, um, the new uh, prospective vice president said, let's use English. People were saying, oh, well, how can you have a word for proton? But what about the word for photosynthesis? Oh, our languages are primitive. We can't do it. And I'm like, do you know that proton just means first? It means nothing but first. This is like Greek and Latin baby talk. <laughs> but we act like this is something so high and mighty that just dropped down from the sky. I'm like, you know we have a word for first. The word kan and akan actually just means first. So why are we holding this central thing? And there was a quote. I just want to share this quote, and then I'm, I'm going to shut up. But it's a quote from uh, Mom Sheikh Anta Joke. Also known as Sheikh Anta Joke, where he says, 
European languages must not be considered diamonds displayed under a glass bell, dazzling us with their brilliance. Our attention must rather be fixed on their historical development. Creatively, we discover that similar paths are open to all. So once we understand this and once we break down and remove the veil of mysticism from English is so technological, when they were invaded by the Latins, when the Romans, when they were invaded by the French and the uh, Norman invasion, that was the that was vernacular. Like you can't do any learning in English. What are you talking about? The language of learning is Latin or the language of learning is French. That's the, the language of cowherds, right? It wasn't even conceivable you could do anything technological, mathematical, or scientific in the English language. But now we look at it like English is the language of, you know, civilization, and all these things, but it's not like that. So I just really wanted to drive home that point that our languages, there are words for every single concept that you can conceive of. And that's what happens when you actually approach it from a place of power, a bibitumi. That's why we call it a bibitumi, black power, right? So we're linking the language learning with what our goals are as African people. And once we do this, it opens up new worlds to us. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ivan. Yes. Sorry, just just for the people that listen to understand probably where that question came from and why Kiswahili and Tree outside of the connections that Dr. Obadeli made with the, with the with the proverb meaning is that uh in the 50s and 60s when Africa was going through its independence and likewise the United States was going through its civil rights and the establishment of the Organization of African Unity and this idea of a United States of Africa, there was a thought pattern and process that happened that said in order for uh, us to have a United States of Africa that we should have one common language for trade that could be spoken across the continent. And at the time, Kiswahili was that language that was presented. For those of us Africans in America who come through our consciousness inside of uh, uh, America, and a lot of us have associated understanding African languages through Kiswahili. So in these Pan-African and nationalist communities, you hear people say Jumbo, Ham Jumbo, Hu Jumbo. When you think about the Ngusa Saba, when you think about Kwanzaa, and you think about all of the various ways that we've attempted to, to, to keep our identity connected, then Kiswahili joins that conversation uh, from that perspective, as opposed to being the most widely spoken language in Africa or the most quote unquote important language. So you might have to do another show um, and have Dr. Obadeli on, because I would love to, to hear him talk about the idea of language and the unification of Africa. And if we indeed need a common language versus pointing out the similarities that exist in the culture of the languages. So. I, I just had to make sure I gave both of y'all some homework because I love learning from y'all so much <laughs> before I left. But I would love to hear hear, hear that a little later in the conversation about that. I just wanted to hop in a quick anecdote about that as well because I mentioned I studied Kiswahili in undergrad. And for me, this is on a personal level, not necessarily related to the unification of all African people or anything like this. But I was, as I just mentioned, I was interested in learning the world view. And in Kiswahili class, we were coming across all these words like BCK as for bicycle and like all these things, basically Kiswahili English, right? And I was like, all right, and there's a proverb in Chi um, or an expression where you say, which is, I don't run away from the fire ants to go hop into a fire. So I'm like, I'm trying to get away from English, but then I get right back into more English and then there's so much Arabic in it and so much other stuff. So just on a personal level, that's why I kind of even just put Kiswahili to the side for a bit. So I'm conversationing in Kiswahili when I went to Kenya. My, I, I switched my phone to Kiswahili. Everything is Kiswahili. So, you know, it's very functional. But if you're looking for actually understanding the African worldview, at that point in time, based on my understanding, I said, I'm going to go for Chi, for Yoruba, because it was very much uh, more tied to indigenous African spirituality, whereas a lot of the Waswahili culture is around you know, Islam, you know, and Arabic this and Arabic that. Um, so I'll, I'll put that in. Definitely uh, where uh, Brother Jello comes in, a lot of the freedom schools, right, the schools around African liberation, my older sister went to Uhuru Sasa, which translates to freedom now, right, that was in New York. So a lot of that movement, and, you know, when my parents gave us names, most of us got, you know, our names, Kiswahili language names, and it was from that, a lot of them ended up being Arabic too. 
But, you know, that was the spirit from which we approached it. Right now, you know, there's this idea of let's have regional languages. That's one proposal. Another one is Kiswahili. That's another proposal. Another is Medunetra resurrecting that as a spoken language, right? The vocalization, because that's one where it's not going to get into quote unquote tribalism of, oh, well, if you pump up tree, then what about God? If you, as a matter of fact, just the other day, and I'll you know, wrap up on this point, uh, there was a sister who was like, um, we were speaking in Chi, so she's Ga. Uh, she's actually done uh, with but she speaks Ga. So I, I said, I'd be a nine. She was like, oh, what's I'd be a nine? You know, I don't, I don't understand Chi like that. Just say it, you know. And I was like, <laughs> so I'd be a nine is the word for 40. It comes from, and it's easy to understand, do is 10 and then nine is four. So modifiers are, they come after. So a do a nine, a do a nine is saying four tens. So that's the way you understand. And it's basically the same thing as saying four T. The T means 10 and then the four. So she was like, oh, just say, she was like, me, I understand God. So I was like, okay, no problem. I think that's young man. She said, Cabrofo, Cabrofo, just speak English, speak English. I was like, one I was like, you see, you embarrass yourself. You said that's the God. So now I say the number in God, now you're lost. So it's like, I'm not just speaking. But you know, basically what this comes down to is we have to have more value for our language, right? You can't pull the thing of let's switch to God. And then when I switch to God, now you're like, okay, now nah, I can't deal with that either. That once we understand that our languages are important, our languages are valuable, then each one of us, you know, for me, I don't look at she as my language. I look at it as one of my languages. And this is what happens when we understand that we're truly African. Yoruba is also my language. Wolof is also my language. Kiswahili is also my language. You know, the brother says, Saobona, I say, Kunjani, and the appeal, right? When on down, like all of these things, because that's also my language. Once I see this, every language on the continent is my language, right? Which is why I can speak something in everyone I've ever come across, right? So I can greet you in Bamanaka, like all of these things. I can greet you in Igbo. I can, but the ones that I've mastered are, of course, the ones that I teach. But once we understand this, then it doesn't get into this, is it Kiswahili versus Chi? We can come to a Kiswahili, right? <laughs> and we can realize that there's a piece for all of our languages. And again, the metronature one is a, a place where we can even see, that's how we can get past the quote unquote tribalism. I don't like that word, but just so people understand. Uh, oh, if you raise up Chi, crabs in the barrel, let's pull that down. We say, which is if you climb a good tree, which should help to push you up, right? So that's what we can work towards as opposed to let's try to pull down P so that we're all under, you know, Abrofo, right? These Eurasians, right? These non black people. I'd rather any African language rise up rather than us all being, you know, trampled by the language of our colonial enemies. And that's my point on that. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I had told, I had on my Instagram said that I would let one person come in um, and ask a question. And so I am uh, putting the link out there for one person to come in and um, ask a question of these gentlemen. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to answer the one question from the comments where somebody said, what is the best way to get, to get connected um, with the panelists? Um, I have been putting it on the screen, how to reach them. So um, Dr. Cambon has his website, which is um, on the screen now. You can reach him through there. He also, you can be reached through his um, his team at media at abibitumi.com. You can reach him there and his media will get back to you, um, let you know about classes or any information you're looking for. Um, there's also, a, <clears throat> excuse me, there's also a USA one as well um, that I was given. Is this correct, Dr. Cambon, this one? I have the two links there. Um, you can reach him through there as well yeah. uh, to get more information on his classes. And as I mentioned before, um, and he mentioned also, he has the app that you can download from the, um, the Google Play Store. Let me put that on the screen, the Google Play Store or from the Apple um, App Store as well. You, so that's how you can reach him. As far as um, with Diallo, Diallo is uh, with the, uh, um, his company is the Adinkra Group. Let me put that on the screen. This is the Instagram page for the Adinkra Group. And this is uh, the website for Diallo's company, the adinkragroup.com. Um, they do birthright journeys. And if you wanna follow them on Instagram, that is their Instagram handle. Uh, Emmanuel's Tree Learning Center is 
on Instagram under this handle here on the screen. And then their website for more information is here, treelearningcentergh.com. Let's see if anybody has clicked on the link to come in. Um, so far, nobody has clicked the link from the comments. I posted in the comments. I don't know if any of you saw that. I posted the link if someone wants to come in and ask a question before we close up and let these guys go. And I do want to have you back on Dr. Cambon, Dr. Cambon um, in the future. Um, I am planning, I had mentioned to my followers before that I'm planning an episode talking about the history of indigenous, uh, indigenous uh, history in Ghana um, and touching on the issues of um, indigenous slavery in Ghana as well because people don't like to talk about that, but it's it's something that we need to, to talk about. Um, but I would love to have you on again to talk about that or even talk about language in more in depth because this was more of an introduction so that people had a chance to see who they can learn from, to know that it is possible to learn a language from scratch that you don't know anything about. As long as you are willing to learn and make the effort to learn, you can um, learn this language and use the options um, available. Let's see, was, that would have been my question, great info. Um, seeing if anybody has a question. Ivy, Ivy, I hope that people also see with this panel that it is possible to work together, right? Yeah. And it is possible to support each other. It is possible to maybe be doing the same thing different ways, but still be supportive and share some of uh, what it is that what it is that you want to do together and, and to help make each other stronger. As we say, iron sharpens iron. So we may, we may all be at different positions in our journey or different levels or even have a different core focus for what it is that we're doing. But at the end of the day, we can definitely find and put more energy into our similarities than into our differences um, with regards to business, brand and worldview. So for me, I hope that people can see that here, too. Awesome. So we have uh, Paperflow Designs who has joined the stream. Hello. Welcome. Hello, Ivy. Thank you so much for um, coming in. I didn't so much have a question, but I, I really appreciate everything you're saying. And um, I made a comment earlier saying that I can relate to what you said about growing up and your parents speaking tree to you and you kind of, you know, wanting to be very uh, like your peers and only speak English. And I was the same way. I grew up in America. Um, I was born in Ghana, but left at a young age and lost so much of that. So I understand it but I really have trouble speaking it. And so, yeah. um, you know, now realizing that as an adult, that it was like such a gift that it's not, I know it's not too late, but it was just such a gift that I really should have um, practiced more. And I mean, now as an adult, I can still go back and, you know, still speak to my parents and it's not too late, but just to say that I can relate and um, reflecting on that now as an adult, I'm thinking, okay, you know, get back into it. This is your language. Like you speak other languages, you speak English, you speak French, you speak all these other languages, like your own language that you grew up with knowing is also a gift that, um, you know, that just should be treasured as well. Fantastic. So I just want to thank you for this. This was uh, just wonderful listening to all of you. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for joining the stream. I'm going to remove you now. Thank you so much. And, um, Connect with these guys if you want any more information, you want to learn, and um, you know everyone else too. Um, connect, and I love that you joined the stream. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can always send me a message too. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. You too. All right. So I'm adding one more website that uh, Dr. Gambon had um, had. Uh, given to me to share so that you can all have information uh, from some of his writings, some of his publications here. Um, so if you wanna get any information, some of his writings, some of his publications, that is the link right there. And uh, we have one person who's and been an active. Before that goes into the connections between Kiswahili proverbs and Akam proverbs is called Kiswahili or Kiswahili, and it goes into how similar they are. And it's really mind blowing when you go into that. So there are several other pu uh, publications. One deals with language learning and the role of motivation. 
that actually ended up winning the uh, Provost Award for the Best Publication in the Humanities at University of Ghana. So for people who are interested in understanding the role of motivation itself in language learning, that's a good one. There are several others there as well. Um, I, my English is very broad, so not everything is linguistics and language learning, but there are several articles, some of which I've referred to earlier. So those who are interested in reading those, you know, by all means, I would definitely love to uh, get feedback on any of those articles that you're interested in. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I appreciate you taking out the time today. Um, and uh, as I said to everybody watching, just go to the links that we've shared throughout this um, this live stream and you can connect with all of them um, about whatever levels you're at, who you feel most connected to, who you think you can get the most information from. Um, we are wrapping up now. Um, I do know that uh, everybody has other things that they have to do. I also have another live stream I'm doing on someone else's channel today too. So um, thank you so much, gentlemen. This has been a fantastic conversation. Um, I said to you, Dr. Cambon, before, I need to learn Ewe. I really do. Do you know Ewe? Very, very. Oh. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> All right. I, I need to I need to start taking lessons. <laughs> All right. Thank and you, thank Jeremy. you so much for having uh, me on, all of us on. Uh, and I'm definitely looking forward to collaborating with uh, Brother Jalo. I've known him from back in DC, Uncle Fa conference days. Uh, Emmanuel just meeting him, e-meeting him here. So, you know, let's see how we can collaborate and work together. We're all going towards uh, similar goals. Um, so yeah, I, I would love to see how we can uh, collaborate. And then also, Ivy, I would definitely love to come back. We can discuss all of those things. I've uh, written an article. One of the publications is dealing with uh, legacies, quote unquote, of transatlantic enslavement. Uh, so we've, we've dealt with a lot of that as well. My interests are very broad. It's all about African liberation. So if it fits with African liberation, Tell me, Habibi Fahodie, Habibi to me. Okay, so one, one last, oh, another thing that I would want to, I would want to add before uh, we end this particular section. It's um, I would want to tell everyone that it's really possible for you to learn a language, no matter who you are, whether a slow learner or a quick learner, it's possible. The only thing you have to do is that you have to set a goal for yourself that this particular week I'm going to learn this particular words at least and know how to use them to form a sentence. So it's really possible for you to learn a language no matter where you're coming from, whether coming from a beginner's aspect or let's say you're feeling rusty because you couldn't express yourself like Madam Ivy or some other, the, the lady that joined, you know, it's, it's really possible. The only thing it's determination. So when you determine to learn a language, it's very good. And one great thing or one important role that the language will play in your journey or visits to any of the African languages, it helps you to immerse yourself with our rich culture. So like Dr. Okunini said, he said um, our language, it's it means um, used in a form of emotions aspect like miyem shishime right so you know it's not like that it's it's not like that with um other language as well you know uh, can you hear me please all right can you hear me okay so okay. okay so what i'm trying to say is um it's possible. So our language, you know, it's when you are speaking our language, the emotions attached to it, it's something else. And it makes you feel so comfortable when, you know, you can speak the language, especially when you want to communicate with people. They can trust you. Trust me. If you can speak the language, if you can speak the key language within it, in Ghana, they can trust you. And it can also build a strong relationship with us, other people as well. So um, it's, it's really great to learn any of the local language that you think will be okay you can learn chi you can learn swahili you can learn everywhere you can learn any of them that you think you would want to you know um you would want to learn so that it helps you to immerse yourself with a rich culture yes we have a rich culture but if you can't really express yourself a typical example is if you go to a festival in kumase whether abai kese whether um or even Ujra in any of them they speak in 
tree. So if, if, if you don't understand, how can you mess yourself with a rich culture, right? So if, if you can express yourself with a, in tree, you can, you know, try to get and you mess yourself with a rich culture and it can also help people to trust you as well. So it is not too late, no matter who you are, where you are, even if you are slow and don't say, huh, I'm a slow learner, so I can learn. It's possible. If only you want to learn, it is possible. So that is something I would want to add to it so that we see how best we can all help. Because one thing is the language barrier. We are trying our best to remove with all of us. We are trying to remove the language barrier that we have in the key language or the language barrier that we have across. So that wherever you visit or any part you find yourself, you can at least speak some of their local language for you to enjoy your stay or your visit. Great, thank you so much, Emmanuel. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone. It's like my screen, okay, there we go. My screen froze for a quick second there. Um, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you all again. I'm gonna end the broadcast now. Everyone, as I had said throughout, the information has been on the screen. Send messages if you do need to reach anyone um, to collaborate or to connect. Thank you so much. And uh, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos that I have here on my channel. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. Okay, so last one before I go, how I'm going. Oh. Have last one. So, you know, um, we have already as um, Dr. I was just ending the broadcast. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just trying to say something by group because the I have. Was ending. I, the other I have two are already. Yeah, I'm going. I'm um, time. It's I'm even far behind time already. But I want to say that um, we are ever ready to support anyone who would want to learn a language. Both myself, Mr. Diallo, and um, Mr. Okunini, we are ever ready as we will collaborate to also find ways to teach people to, you know, immerse themselves because that is what is our identity and that is what makes us, you know, a real African. That is what is really necessary because if we can do this, then it means we can enjoy our rich culture and people coming to their motherland would know that indeed we have something that they've been missing so that they can feel comfortable when they get to their various local homes or motherlands. Okay, so for now, I think I have to also leave you like you've left because I'm far behind time already so that we can make it another time. So anytime you want to have a live session like this or anything that you want us to help out, we are ever ready to try our best to make it possible. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. Okay. Have a good evening. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching today. I appreciate you taking the time out um, to watch this live stream and to learn about how can you learn a Ghanaian language. I know we weren't able to really dive in and do actual lessons, but today was an opportunity to find out about the language, about history, and about um, that you could possibly learn too, because I wanted to represent the different types of people. We had Dr. Kambon, who's become fluent in speaking a Ghanaian language and has learned other African languages too, and teaches. Um, who's very well versed in the history of different African cultures. And then to have um, Emmanuel, who is a native uh, tree speaking person here in Ghana and running the Tree Learning Center. So you have an opportunity to hear from a native speaker. And then also Diallo, who is an African American who has had a strong connection to um, Africa and to encouraging the diaspora to come to Africa and visit and learn the culture and take it all in. So um, I did put on the screen for, um, for you to, throughout this video to see you know, how you can reach them. So I'll put it on the screen again for people who may have missed it. Some people have joined later, but um, Dr. Cambone has um, his website, um, Abibutumi. You can get a lot of information about learning um, African languages there. And he also has other things that he teaches too. He actually just did a film that he had a screening for yesterday, a digital screening. Um, and then the Tree Learning Center, this is their website. Um, they have digital online classes as well as in person if you are in Ghana um, and you want to take lessons or if you are not in Ghana and you want to do it virtually, go to their website for more information. You can um, get to Diallo from the Adinkra Group going to put that on the screen here. So his website is theadinkergroup.com for more information um, to uh, connect with him there. And he has a collaboration with the Tree Learning Center to learn uh, from them as well. I appreciate everybody who has come on here um, today and taken the time out on a Sunday. Um, I know that 
you know, you could be doing anything else, but you decided to come and join us for this conversation about learning an African language. And I appreciate you all um, for joining. And um, I appreciate you all who have subscribed to my channel. Um, stay up to date as much as possible with some of the information that I like to share about what's happening in Ghana on the continent of Africa um, and with some of my experiences. So thank you so much and have a fantastic evening, afternoon or morning, whatever time of day it is that you're watching this. Take care.